Happy Triple Hunter Thursday, everyone. And now, on with our feature presentation. There are certain things that just go perfectly together in college football, and fit like a glove, where it's tough to imagine anything else. There are certain things where your mind immediately associates it with something else, even if it's not by design. As an example, if I see the phrase Hawaii Bowl, odds are, the first team that comes to your mind is Hawaii, even though the game has been around since 2002, and Hawaii hasn't even played in half of those games. Yet, it's tough to imagine a Hawaii Bowl without Hawaii in it. Heck, in the last 12 years, Hawaii has played in the Hawaii Bowl just three times. But it feels like way more than that, doesn't it? It's funny how your brain works like that. Here's another example. If I see the New Orleans Bowl, the first team that comes to mind is Louisiana, or Louisiana Lafayette as they were known for a while. Louisiana has only played in one of the last six editions of these bowl games, and since the Bulls' creation in 2001, they haven't even played in one third of these games, including none in the first decade. And yet, trying to picture a New Orleans Bowl without Louisiana in it is difficult off the top of your head. I bring this up because for our story today, when you think of the Motor City Bowl, odds are, the first team that comes to your mind is Marshall. You just associate that bowl game with a thundering herd, even though Marshall doesn't have an automatic tie-in with that game, and they don't play in it every year. But when the game started out, it was easy to see why people just made that connection that this was Marshall's bowl game, because they played in this game for four straight seasons. And by the end of the fourth year, let's just say the bowl organizers had enough, and were so fed up with having Marshall continuously appear in their bowl game that they threw a fit, and basically told Marshall, straight up, we don't want you here anymore, and whatever it takes to get you to not come anymore, we'll do it. And as you can probably expect, you can imagine how Marshall took the news. Because this is the story behind Marshall, the Motor City Bowl, and the bizarre controversy in 2000 that rocked the bowl game forever. Before I talk about the controversy in question, and what caused such an uproar, we need some context to understand how Marshall even got invited to the 2000 Motor City Bowl in the first place, which is the game that you've been watching. The year is 2000, and Marshall has one goal in their mind. Continue what had to be, without a doubt, the greatest transition from the Division 1 AA level to the Division 1A level of all time. After moving up to Division 1A in 1997 following 13 straight seasons with a winning record, and two Division I AA titles, including one in 1996, Marshall immediately succeeded at the 1A level, winning the MAC in 1997, then winning it again in 1998, then winning it again in 1999 by going undefeated with a 13-0 record, and by ending that season as the number 10 ranked team in all of college football. If you told the college football fan at the start of that season that Marshall would end the year ranked higher than Penn State, Heck, if you told them that at the end of October, I don't think they would have believed you. And yet, here we were, with the thundering herd as one of the top teams of the nation. Now, the bad news in 2000 was that they had their worst season ever as an FBS school, or a 1A school, as this was a far cry from their undefeated campaign the previous year. However, the good news was that, well, they were still a very good football team, and their worst year was still a year that tons of programs around the MAC would kill to have, as they finished the regular season with a 7-5 record, an East Division title, and a fourth consecutive victory in the MAC championship, when they defeated Western Michigan 19-14 to win the conference yet again. It was looking bleak for a while for Marshall, as they started the season with a 2-4 record, including a 1-2 start in conference play. However, they bounced back by winning five of their final six going into the bowl season. And while there were a lot of reasons for their success, they did this thanks to a great passing offense from quarterback Byron Lefwich, who led the conference in passing yards, passer rating, passes completed, and passing touchdowns, while also being seventh in the NCAA in passing yards. And they did this thanks to a solid passing defense that held opponents to just 180 yards per game, and averaged more than two interceptions per game. Even though a 7-5 regular season was bad by Marshall's standards, seeing as this was their worst record since 1990, and since they lost more games this year, 
Then they lost from 1996 to 99 combined when they went 50 and 4 and won just under 93% of the games. To end the year with a conference title is not too shabby. And for the thundering herd, this meant a trip to the Motor City Bowl in Detroit, yet again. The Motor City Bowl was created in 1997, and the first ever game featured a battle between the Ole Miss Rebels and the Marshall Thundering Herd. Marshall lost that game 34 to 31, but they were back in 1998 when they took on the Louisville Cardinals and won 48-29 thanks to a great performance from future first-round pick Chad Pennington, who had 411 yards and four touchdowns. Then, they returned in 1999, when as an undefeated team, they took on the BYU Cougars and won 21-3, thanks in part to a dominant defense that held BYU to negative 16 rushing yards and a dominant ground game led by Doug Chapman, who ran for 133 yards on 9.5 yards per carry and two touchdowns. Now you might be wondering how this was possible. How could the same team play in three, and now, in this case, four consecutive bowl games? And the answer to that was quite simple. Back then, the MAC only had one bowl bid. Getting it as an at-large if you were a MAC team was almost impossible. The only way to make a bowl most of the time was to win the conference, thereby getting the automatic bid into the Motor City Bowl. But Marshall getting the bid in 2000 left the Motor City Bowl up in arms, even though this was an automatic tie-in. Because to make a bowl game, and the same one at that, in four straight years, especially if you're not the hometown team when you're playing in your backyard, a la Florida Atlantic in the Boca Raton Bowl, or Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl, it's a lot tougher to hype that one up and sell tickets for it. Any Marshall fan that wanted to see their team play at the Silverdome and play in the Motor City Bowl has probably done so already, seeing as they had three years worth of chances. There's a law of diminishing returns, and it absolutely applies here, especially when this was Marshall's worst season. On top of that, this wasn't an issue when Marshall was the clear-cut best team in the MAC. I don't think Motor City Bowl officials were complaining much in 1999 when they had to take a nationally ranked undefeated Marshall team. But in 2000, when they were only 7-5, and five, and when there were better teams in the standings, like a 9-3 Western Michigan team in the home state, and a 10-1 Toledo team, who was so good that they had the number 11 ranked offense in the nation, the number 3 ranked defense in the nation, a point differential of plus 275, and went on the road to Happy Valley to take on Penn State and beat them by 18 points? Yeah, that's a bit different. In fact, the Motor City Bowl was so furious about this and was so angry about having to invite Marshall yet again that immediately after Marshall won the MAC championship over Western Michigan, they met with conference officials to change the rules, proposing a system where the MAC team participating in the Motor City Bowl had to have at least eight wins. Oh, would you look at that, how convenient. Marshall's only got seven. They also propose a stipulation that just because you're the champion doesn't mean you're the champion. As if a team had two more wins or two fewer defeats than you, then you might not get the spot in the bowl game. That's awfully convenient that Western Michigan had three losses and Toledo had one loss, while Marshall had five. Basically, this stipulation that the Motor City Bowl tried to put in was the Screw Marshall rule, where the intent was to make it so that Marshall couldn't keep coming back to this game. Theoretically, under this rule, even if Marshall went undefeated and won the conference, if there was another MAC team that had two losses, they could get the spot, forcing Marshall to go to a random bowl game with a lesser payout, or perhaps no bowl game at all. And just in case it wasn't obvious that this was a provision designed to hurt Marshall, Ken Hoffman, the executive director of the Motor City Bowl, said on this, It makes sense to at least discuss this for the best interests of the bowl and the conference. Many of the other relationships between bowls and conferences have such provisions. Translation, it's in the best interest of the conference if we don't have Marshall competing anymore. And naturally, you can imagine how Marshall felt about this. Here they were, winning the conference and getting to play in a bowl game as a reward for this. And the bowl game doesn't want them there, especially after they benefited heavily in 1999 
by having an undefeated Marshall team play there? Yeah, they felt incredibly disrespected. And it's not hard in the slightest bit to see why. Head coach Bob Pruitt took time before their fourth straight Motor City Bowl, with this one being against the Cincinnati Bearcats, to bash Motor City Bowl officials for their disrespect and for their unwelcomeness. As Pruitt said, Last year, we were 11-0, and nobody was crying then. They were begging us to come, hoping we didn't take another bull bid. This is a bunch of bull. Some people in Detroit and Michigan were upset that their team didn't get here. Well, you gotta win the championship to get to this bowl. In Marshall's eyes, and rightfully and understandably so, the Motor City Bowl was designed to reward the champion of the map. If you win the conference, you get to go to Detroit. And you can't complain when the same team keeps winning the conference and getting that bid, since that's how you designed it. To complain about a team playing in the game, especially when that team has drawn well in previous installments of the game, especially when that team honored their contract in 1999 when they didn't have to, and when they did everything the right way in order to get there? To make them feel unwelcome, and almost make them feel bad for winning the conference over and over again? That's gonna rub people the wrong way, just as it did Marshall, and just as it did head coach Bob Pruitt, seeing as their hard work all season was being rewarded with a trip to a bowl game that didn't even want them there in the first place. As for how this bowl game turned out, Marshall was able to prove themselves worthy of this game yet again, as they defeated Cincinnati by a final score of 25-14, in a game that was, oddly enough, the highest attended Motor City Bowl of all time, and remained that way up until the 2006 installment of the game between Central Michigan and Middle Tennessee. So I failed to see what the heck Motor City Bowl officials were complaining about. The team that they were so angry about having to invite won, and the game drew a good crowd, even if a lot of that had to do with Cincinnati fans who made the trip. So this felt like a pretty good ending to what they unnecessarily and inappropriately viewed as a crisis situation of sorts. But in 2000, the Marshall Thundering Herd heard the message loud and clear from the Motor City Bowl officials. In the words of a 90s one-hit wonder, call them Uncle Sam, because we don't ever want to see you again. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.